G'day friends, welcome to the Easter Swatch Dolls tutorial. I'm very excited to show you this one because I got very carried away when I was doing the samples and I made a bunch. So, uh, this isn't going to show you how to draw the actual Swatch Doll, the figure that we're working with. If you want to learn how to draw that, there is another tutorial, the Swatch Dolls tutorial. I will link it up the, like in the card, the little description box up here, I guess. <laughs> um, and so go and check out that tutorial if you don't know how to draw the figure, the base that we're working with. Everything else that we're going to do is like the, uh, the seasonal add-on. Yeah, so if you've done the Halloween one, you'll know that we just uh, walk through step by step, very simplified versions of uh, little doodles you might want to add around Halloween time. We did it at Christmas as well uh, with the washi trees. That was fun. And now Easter, um, I've got something really, really fun. Not anything in particular like crazy, like the washi trees, uh, not anything groundbreaking, but I do have new paper that I'm working with that I'm so obsessed with. And the style that I've done the samples in is something that I haven't really experimented with before, but I'm kind of falling in love with. So I can't wait to show you the samples. First, let's go through each thing that we're going to learn how to draw and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. Okay, I've zoomed you in a little bit because I want you to see what I'm doing really close up. I'm using my Mitsubishi Vermilion and Prussian Blue Pencil. I love this. This was gifted to me in Happy Mail, so I cannot take credit for finding this pencil, but I do love it. It is my favorite sketching pencil because a lot of the times I'll sketch in the red and then I'll darken up whatever lines I need to keep in the blue or add in some shading with the blue. I just think it's a great sketching pencil and the lead's really nice and soft as well. So let's start. We're doing Easter, so let me just write some Easter here just in case you forgot. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is an egg. Now, <laughs> this is simple, uh, but there are some people out there that might be struggling with an egg, so I do want to show you. If you start with an oval shape, an oval shape just like this, uh, that's assuming that both the top and the bottom are symmetrical. Now the thing about an egg is that on the top, it kind of tapers in a little bit, so you want to draw just within the lines at the top, and at the bottom, you kind of want to flatten it out a little bit. So you might want to go just outside the lines a touch, but when you get to the bottom, just try to square it off just a little bit. Now I find that I have to put a lot of sketchy lines in when I'm doing an egg, because it is kind of a difficult shape to draw for me. I don't find the curve very easy to do. But this is the egg shape. So now essentially if you folded it over, these two sides wouldn't match up. And that's kind of the thing you want to remember about an egg is that there is no symmetry from top to bottom, but there is symmetry from left to right uh, in an ideal perfect egg world. <laughs> but that's an egg. So if you're looking to draw an egg, just think of an oval shaped, but you kind of want to taper it at the top and flatten it at the bottom. And you might want to go over it a couple of times just to make sure the shape is something that you like. Uh, as far as the egg details are going to go, all we're going to worry about today is a crack, which I would just encourage you to go nuts with some zigzag lines. Uh, that's probably not going to look like a, a very realistic crack in an egg. Um, so you might want to keep the zigzags kind of close together and uh, all along the same plane and not kind of dip and valley and peak and mountain too high. Um, but we're going to draw little chick bunnies in the egg today. So I do want to show you that this is kind of the crack that we're going to be working with. Um, you can put an extra crack off as well, just some more little zigzag lines if you're looking to go extra with the details. Um, but today I'm not going to do any of that. The next thing we're going to look at is a tulip. Now I don't draw florals and for a lot of mixed media artists love to draw florals and I do love watching people draw them and I love looking at them. Um, but I don't find a lot of joy in actually drawing them. I don't know, I just don't get off on it. So, um, I did manage to teach myself how to draw this tulip. So I will help you uh, figure out how to draw it uh, since it's something that I had to learn just for this. I'm kind of starting with this, uh, kind of the egg shape that we were doing before, the oval. And uh, what you want to do when you're actually drawing it in is you don't want to connect the top. You want to leave a space up there. It doesn't matter how wide the space is, but I would encourage you to bring it kind of closer together. I think that looks nicer. And then when you get to the bottom, really flatten that out. Uh, it also doesn't matter if you don't flatten it out too much. A shape like this will do just fine as well. When you get to the top, see these points are open right here. You just want to cross one over to meet the other side of that semicircle shape. And then you want to bring the other one in as well. So that kind of looks like the petals have folded over each other. And then all I do is add some little triangle details up the top to insinuate there are extra petals, uh, you know, inside that little, <laughs> those two folded ones there. Uh, so again, you've got this U shape, you've got the opening at the top. You can do this either way. You just have to uh, cross this over like this. It kind of looks like a little kimono at that point. <laughs> and then just add your little triangle details at the top 
just to make it look like there's more in there. And then the stem, I'm just going really basic and just drawing two lines parallel to one another. I do like to taper it off down the bottom just because I think it looks a little more elegant. And the leaves, I've actually painted my examples. So they're all done in watercolor and I let the uh, brush make the shapes of the leaves just by applying pressure and then taking your tapering it off and then applying some more pressure. Just give it a very loose, organic kind of a flow. But if you do want to draw them, uh, just create, I will show you here, a really simple S curve. Really, uh, you can exaggerate it, you can keep it very soft. You don't really want an S like this. I mean, you can if you if you feel like it. Uh, but I, I just kind of like them really soft and loose. And then you're going to uh, just recreate that S curve off either side of that line. So the line down the middle that you created first will be your vein. And then the line on either side will show you where the leaf is kind of where the leaf is. It's the outline of the leaf, basically. <laughs> I couldn't find a way to say that. Um, so yeah, this is the, uh, the leaf, but like I said, I let the brush do it and then I added the vein in with a pencil afterwards. The option is up to you if you want to draw it in first or if you just want to do it with your brush. I think it's easier with the brush, to be honest, than to draw it in. And uh, I found that it's a really great way to fill up the rest of your background negative space as well. So uh, my recommendation, just leave it, do it with a brush, up to you. Let's look at a carrot because a carrot is just so obviously Easter. We're going to do a really long teardrop shape. Now you want to remember this shape for the ears that we're going to learn how to do as well, just in a minute. This is a long teardrop shaped carrot. Now some carrots have these little like string hairs at the end. You don't really need to worry about that. Um, and then the leaves at the end, I really don't know how, I don't know how to explain this any better than just drawing them. They're kind of like wiggly lines. That's how I've been doing them anyway, and then I put a vein right down the middle. I don't even know if they have them like that, but that's how we're going to do it for this tutorial. Uh, for the actual carrot itself, carrots aren't really this kind of smooth. So what I like to do is just hold my pencil further back and kind of let the uh, pencil just, I don't know, make it a little bit more rough and kind of dip in and out. I do like my carrots to be longer and thinner than this, but for this example, I think it's fine. Uh, and then, you know, I would darken up the outside when I'm happy with the shape. You get the idea with the leaves. <laughs> the actual carrot details. You want to think of your carrot, when you put lines on something, I, I see this with legs a lot too, when people draw legs and uh, we, we all love those little whimsical, uh, you know, black and white stocking legs. I think that's a staple for most of us. So when you're drawing these uh, legs, I notice a lot of people just go straight across like this. There's nothing wrong with that. But when things kind of fo follow a curve, they are actually curved themselves. So if you're drawing these legs again, and you want it to then look, I mean, slightly more realistic than what I just drew, you might want to curve them just like this. And you curve them, we've done this with the candy cane. I remember teaching this with the uh, the candy cane when we did the Christmas tutorial. Um, you, when something is curved like this and cylindrical, you do kind of want to curve the lines, even if you're trying to make a quote unquote straight line. Um, and then it just kind of gives it just a little bit more realism. And like I said in the candy cane, if you leave the middle bit open, it looks like a highlight, so. It's up to you, you don't have to do it. Uh, but that principle comes in handy with this uh, carrot because putting the lines on straight on the carrot would look a little bit unusual. So what I like to do is choose whatever curve I'm working with. So I wanna keep that constant throughout this carrot. And then I'm just going to put little lines, little strokes and dashes, but it all has to follow the same curve that I originally started out with. And that will insinuate that the uh, it's cylindrical all the way along to the end of the carrot. And those are your simple carrot details. You don't have to add many. I added quite a lot to that, but you really don't need that many. And uh, I think that's a really nice way to get kind of a realistic looking carrot. Let me grab another piece of paper and let's look at the ears because I just said you want to remember that shape. So we're going to do some bunny ears. I love to add these ears on anything, and one of the samples have actually added carrots for ears instead because the shape kind of still works. Um, so what we're doing with the ears, I'm going to put a little face here. I'm going to show you two different examples. One is very, very simple, and one is just kicked it up a tiny notch. So a teardrop shape, right, is like this. We usually draw them upside down. They can look like rain, they can look like tears. If you flip it, it kind of looks like this. It kind of looks like the carrot that we just did. What I want to do for the ears is really stretch that out and, uh, and really play with the proportion. You can leave them kind of open at the bottom, but I think 
I've been preferring them kind of closed off and tapered in. I don't know why. It doesn't look very realistic, but you understand that their bunny is in the actual picture, you know? So um, I'm just elongating those upside down teardrop shapes and then simply drawing another one in the center to infer the inner ear of the rabbit. And I think those look like rabbit ears. Honestly, I wouldn't even go any further than that. Um, some of them I have been uh, making a little bit pointier at the ends because I think that's a fun little look as well. So if you want to do that, um, I'd encourage you to do that. For this one, we're going to look at a folded ear. So let's just uh, make these little pointy ones like I've been saying I've been doing. <laughs> I've got one over here. Now this one over here, you want to draw it the same as you've done this one. So we're starting with the same upside down teardrop shape, but you don't want to take it all the way to the top. You want to stop about two thirds of the way of the other ear. If you take it all the way to the top and then draw your fold, this ear is going to be substantially longer than the other one. So you do need to cut it off sooner than the top of this. So I would say two thirds of the way and you're pretty good. Now I'm going to put a little point off to the side somewhere, just wherever I want the ear to finish, kind of close to the ears. If you do it out here, like I said again, it'll look like a really long ear. So just around here, it doesn't have to be mathematically precise. If you just do it closer to this ear somewhere, it will look okay. Now I'm going to draw that upside down teardrop shape again, but I'm going to catch this left line over here. So I'm going to catch the inner ear and I'm also going to hit the outer ear when I come back. So basically I'm just kind of connecting this little upside down teardrop shape to these lines. Now this is the tricky part. When you're actually outlining it, you want to go do the whole outline first, right? So we've got the outline like that. Kind of looks like a seven backwards if you did bubble lettering. <laughs> and now to actually insinuate the fold, you want to take this line, so the, the teardrop shape line you've got here, and just darken up a little bit of it. So it cuts off the ear just like that. If you take it all the way to the end, that doesn't really look realistically like a fold. It will still probably look okay. But I think if you're following along, this is simple enough just to uh, stop yourself, leave a bit of a gap between this line that's folded and the inner ear. And then add in the inner ear like you did before. We don't need to add the, that this little detail to the top because this is the back of the ear that's folded forward. So you wouldn't be seeing the inside of the ear just here. And then we've got our other ear right there. So that's a folded ear. Uh, pretty simple. Just remember, we're still doing the upside down teardrop shape. We're still catching the teardrop shape. I'll do it here. Upside down teardrop shape. I'm going to put my little point off here. I'm catching both sides here. And then I'm just going to darken up the outlines and cut that off just like that. Put in my inner ear. We've got a folded ear. So it's, it's simple enough, and I could start to give you more details about how to make this look more realistic, like flattening off the top just a little bit and uh, bringing it down in here, but I just don't think that's necessary for this tutorial. Uh, this will work perfectly. Let's look at the chick's face. Now we don't really, oop, is that how you spell chicks? <laughs> It's been a while since I've done anything. You'll have to excuse me. This move was crazy. It's fried my brain. Uh, so inside the egg, we're actually going to draw some little chicks. Now, I want to put the crack in it already. It's a very even looking crack. <laughs> When we put the chicks inside the eggs, I've been giving them bunny ears. That is completely optional. Obviously everything's optional, but I just think they look a little bit more whimsical and unusual. Um, so I've just been putting the bunny ears inside as well. This is a very quick sketch, obviously. Uh, you want to put the eyes over here. Whatever eyes you know how to do, they will look perfectly fine. If you don't want to do any kind of open eyes, just put two little shapes and the chick can be sleeping. That's perfectly fine as well. Now around here, we want to put the uh, the beak, the bill, you know, the little, um, whatever their mouth is, whatever a chicken's mouth is called. <laughs> um, so what I've been doing with that shape, it's kind of a tricky shape. We've got this, uh, we've got this oval on its side here. Now, if you kind of split that in half, what you want to do is kind of round it off to make it look like a, uh, a rounded triangle. And you want to kind of do that underneath that line as well. And then whatever's left over, just attach the bottom of the beak there. It looks very uh, cartoony and honestly, I don't think this is a style that I'm in love with, but I could not figure out a better way to do it. And uh, I found that it looked fine in the, in the end, but um, if 
If you've got any other kind of cute way to do this little beak, let me know. I did try with just the little triangle. I think that's cute as well, but it just, it wasn't enough for what I was doing. Um, so this is another option for you if you want to just do a little triangle. Uh, otherwise, I have been doing this kind of rounded triangle, then upside down, and then the little beak underneath. Now for this as well, I've been adding a little tuft of hair on the top. I've been adding a little tuft of hair on the cheeks. And uh, I think that's super cute, obviously optional. And uh, I've been giving them spots on their eggs because I think speckled eggs is such a, a fun look for this. So these are the little chicks that we're doing. If you are so inclined, uh, put some little ovals on the bottom and they can have feet. I haven't done that at all. I didn't want them to have little rabbit feet because I wanted them to be stuck inside their egg. But if you do just want to put these little ovals down here, they will look like little rabbit feet. And I think that's fun too. I'm gonna grab another piece of paper. And the last thing we're going to learn how to draw is the bonnet. Now, if you've watched my stamp series tutorial, you would have already seen how I've simplified drawing these hats. What we're gonna do is start off with a face. I'll do it in red just so you can see. Our swatch dolls, we always kind of, uh, hit up this area and put a bang in there. Uh, if you've seen this tutorial, that's how I like to, uh, I think they're just the most simple that way. So this is the uh, kind of the idea of a swatch doll, <laughs> the uh, proportions. What we're gonna do, we're going to cut off the top of this head with this little semicircle arch just here. And that's gonna be where the hat kind of sits on top of the head. Now this, I've exaggerated the shape and, um, and please feel free to go as nuts as you want. Uh, but for this, I can't fit everything on the paper. So I'm just going to do a smaller version of it. We're going to draw, it's kind of like a really flat semicircle. We're not going to go across the face because this is actually disappearing behind her. That's the back of the brim. And we're just going to, uh, I mean, you can keep going over it. Once you've got the shape, you've got the idea. You want to keep it very flat because the angle that you draw a face on is kind of, um, for these purposes, it's kind of just flat and front on. Uh, so you wouldn't be seeing a ton of this underneath section just here because the head's not tilted up. So you do want to keep it quite flat to the head and maybe even add just the little bump of the, uh, the actual hat. We've got the hat, the Easter parade hat. You can add so many decorations on top of this, especially if you just do like a really big one and go nuts. I've actually been adding ears on the top. So I've been adding them just here where the hat kind of meets the brim. Um, and then on one of them, I added carrots. This is a very poor attempt at a quick carrot. Of course, if you wanted to draw flowers, you could just go nuts and give them the most ultra Easter bonnet, which I think would be really fun. The part that I love most about it is the uh, the little ribbon that comes across the face. So this is perfect because for anyone that struggles with face shapes, all we're going to do is round this off so we can keep that really circular face shape of the swatch doll. Now, because I've drawn this a little exaggerated over to the edges, this is where I want my ribbons to kind of burst out of and connect down just underneath the chin. I would put a few little lines in there just to insinuate folds in the fabric. And then underneath, I'm gonna do a little square. I'm gonna do two triangles coming out from that square. That's gonna be our bow. If you wanna add an extra detail in this bow, you can do this. I really don't know what to call this, but let's just call them little shadow lines. And that will look like the bow is folded so that there's a front and the back to that. Uh, but also sometimes I've just done the square and I've just done the triangles because I think that looks fine as well. You can add your ribbons off there. I've been giving them very skinny necks like this, uh, like the stems of the tulips, just because, I don't know, I'm really into that lately. I used to do these long neck ladies all the time, um, and I still do a lot of long necks, but this has been like the new shape that I've been playing with. Kind of, um, I mean, it's still thin at the top, but it tapers kind of down to nothing, and then it comes to the, um, to the bodice just here. So this is our hat. Again, let me just go through it really, really quickly. We've got the head cut off a little bit at the top with a semicircular shape. Add a really flattened out, kind of like rings around a planet, like Saturn, even though I hate space. You want to add the little bump of the hat on top, adding the fabric just underneath, connecting it just to the chin, a little square, and some triangles for a bow. So whatever you want to put up here, you can. If you want to put your tulips up here, you can. You can do two big tulip ears. That's gonna float your boat. And that is everything that I have to teach you as far as the uh, the elements that we're going to add to our finished piece. Uh, I do wanna say, I'm going to map everything out and show you how I put it together. So we're gonna create the layout together and show you where everything goes. And then I'll leave it up to you to figure out how you wanna color it in and finish it. 
This paper is what I've been using for my samples and I am obsessed. This is by B Paper Company. It's 100% cotton, uh, cold pressed watercolor paper. So cold pressed just means it's uh, got a lot of texture to it. Uh, if you think of cold as like giving you goosebumps, the paper's got goosebumps. Uh, so it's like it's textured and bumpy, which is really, really beautiful for um, getting pencil texture and crayon texture because uh, I've been experimenting with this very storybook kind of uh, way of coloring and illustration for this and I think it just worked really really well with this paper I don't know what it is I don't know how they make it so well and uh, and what specifically about it makes it different maybe it's the sizing I just don't know but it is a great paper and uh, really really love it it's archival quality as well so if you're looking to make pieces to sell uh, and that's something that you need to consider B paper company the watercolor I'm just obsessed this is the art journal series and this is the professional series I don't know what the difference is I've been playing with both I really do love this one that came in the pack, but I still feel like this is like almost the same. So maybe there's a slight difference. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but all the samples that I've been doing for the most part have been on this paper and I'm loving it. I'm obsessed. I got this locally, so I don't know uh, where I could send you to. I'm sure there are websites that sell it, maybe on Amazon. Um, but yeah, B Paper Company, if you're looking to try some new watercolor paper that is beautiful. So let me grab some paper and zoom you out and do our layout. So I'm going to sketch in red and blue. Everything I do in red is kind of, I guess, just the swatch doll and some of the background elements. Um, and the blue is going to be whatever we learnt in our lesson and I'll make sure to point out uh, where we're putting that and how we're putting it in. Let's start with the actual swatch doll. I want to keep her head kind of small and lower and lower than the top of the page because I'm going to add a massive bonnet with some massive ears. Um, I love playing with proportion when we're doing illustrations because uh, anything you can kind of stretch and elongate or compact and uh, put, you know, smaller and uh, miniaturize, I think that's what makes people look at your work and go, oh, there's something weird about that. It's interesting. I don't know if I like it. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. But they look at it for longer. They digest it for longer. And I think it really uh, plays with people's imaginations. So I love to play with proportion for those reasons. And I just think it makes everything a little more fantastical. And uh, I, don't, I don't know, I think it's just more fun. So uh, let me just draw this swatch doll base first. All right, now at the bottom, I find a lot of people don't really know what to do to ground their work. I have just been putting this really flat oval shape in here, so it kind of looks like a podium. Uh, well, I mean, I consider it to be ground, but uh, I just think it really does, pardon the pun, uh, ground your image. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I just, I think it's good to have kind of a base for everything to sit on and a platform for everything to be on. Uh, if you feel like some of your illustration just floating into nowhere and you want to create a more finished looking piece, I would uh, consider putting something at the bottom. The first thing I want to add is the bonnet. So, getting my blue pencil and I'm doing exactly what we did when we learnt it. I am making this so obscenely huge. You do not have to make it this large if that freaks you out or if you just plain hate that look. <laughs> uh, but like I said, playing with proportion is really interesting. I just think it's really interesting to look at. For this sample, I did, I gave her carrot ears. So I'm drawing two big carrots off the top of her head, and then the little leaves. So much of this I sketched out uh, in a colored pencil, just a light gray or a light red probably. Um, and then I watercolored it, and then I went back in and added some details with a lead uh, mechanical pencil. So I think that's a really soft look and I'll explain a bit about it when I show you the samples. But that's why I find it necessary when I'm sketching not to add in too many details because I know I'm just gonna go over the top of it anyway. So she's got big carrot ears, a little fabric sash headdress thing. I'm gonna give her some big bow moment here. I'm gonna add these little loops in here to make it look like the bow is actually folded. I'm good with that. Let's add in our eggs. I'm gonna do a really big one over this side and then a smaller one on the other side. Now these are gonna be the foreground of my image so I don't care that I'm drawing over the top of that swatch doll. See, I really do loop it around a lot of times. I do not find that shape easy to draw. Uh, so I totally understand if that's something that you struggle with. These are going to be those little chick bunnies that we were looking at drawing, so I'm going to give these bunny ears. Now I know that this part of the creature is at the front, 
but I do want to hide this ear behind because this is just going to cover too much of our fun detail and uh, stuff like that is easily forgiven by the eyes. People aren't going to instantly pick up that you've kind of uh, pushed the perspective a little bit and skewed the reality because we're drawing chickens with rabbit ears, so I don't think people are too worried with reality when you're drawing these things. I'm gonna give these bunny ears too. I'm actually gonna give this one the folded over ear. I want their little beaks to be kind of higher, just over here. And then I'm gonna give them the little closed eyes just to make this part of the tutorial a little more simple. The reason I did this first is because I'm going to put in my crack now and I wanna make sure that I have a crack opening for the little beak. Let's give them the little uh, triangular little beak moment here. I think the reason I don't like these beaks is because they look too happy and I didn't want them to look happy. <laughs> Which is stupid, I mean, they're allowed to look happy, but I just, I think I kind of wanted them to look a little more mysterious, so. If you want to, you can give them little chicken wings, little uh, buffalo wild wings, but I'm not going to bother with that. Now, I'm gonna draw this part in red because I'm, it's gonna get a little bit confusing. Um, because this is a background element. So I wouldn't punch this out in your illustration, but we did learn how to draw this. So I'm just gonna put massive tulips in the background. Having these really massive tulips as well kind of gives it a, a Honey, I Shrunk the Kids moment, which I think is really fun. Like I said, proportion, when you're looking at this, you'll be like, hang on, are they massive tulips? Is she just really tiny? What are those eggs? Is she egg sized? Like, <laughs> just, um, I, you kind of want to make people think. And then with the leaves, this is where I'd start filling in all the background space by making some huge leaves, making some that bend in weird ways. Uh, but you'll see in my sample have just kind of filled the extra spaces with some of the foliage and the background elements. I just, I really love it. I'm just, I'm super taken with this at the moment. That's why I did so many samples. And honestly, like this is just one version. I, um, I, I don't mind if you pick any of the versions that I show you to have a go at because this is why I do these tutorials is to help you out. Now I'm just gonna put these little arms coming down. She's kind of taking care of her pets. If you put them behind the ears and stuff, it really, I know this kind of looks stupid, but I mean, in all reality, this ear could be back there. Um, but you can put the arms behind, then you don't have to worry about drawing hands or anything. So love to cut that corner. I have also given her little tulip sleeves because that's an actual thing. I don't know if you know this, in fashion you can have tulip sleeves. You can have a tulip skirt as well. Never mind that one. <laughs> so I've given her little tulip sleeves as well, just to add another little detail in there. Everything else you do from this point, how you color it in, how you decide to uh, get your mixed media on with it, is up to you, and it will uh, it will completely change the way everything looks. So, let me show you first what I came up with. Now, I was really unhappy with this example, and I know you're gonna look at me and be like, don't. Don't do that to yourself, like stop doing that. The reason I was unhappy with it is because I started adding too much and it wasn't the look I was going for. It wasn't the feeling. I like the color palette. I think it's, you know, spring and it's fun and it's bright. But this was just a case of me adding and adding and adding and I kind of stopped myself and I thought, I'm just gonna keep adding to this until it's completely covered. And I just don't want to because I, I wanna start it again. I wanna do it the way I imag imagined it. I wanna do it the way that I wanna see it. So, I then came up with this one. And this is what I'm so obsessed with. So this is the one we just looked at. This is exactly the same layout. So we've learned how to draw everything. Technically, you are capable of producing this. If you've watched the Swatch Dolls tutorial and you've watched this tutorial, you are absolutely equipped to come up with this illustration. Exactly this. So. Uh, I'm not precious about this. If you want to put this straight into your journals, please, please, please have a go. I really had a great time with this. The, the coloring of it was so much fun. I loved how soft everything looked. I was really messy with this too and really, really loose, which is uh, something that I've been trying. I mean, it wasn't messy and loose down here, but these are all the simple details that I, I generally add. And all I did was go in with a um, the Pilot OPT mechanical pencil. Um, so I've just done these little, what I usually do is chokers. I put them around the eggs. I've done lots of little doodles and zen tangling down the bottom here. Lots of the little stripe details that we love, given her little polka dot uh, sheer socks. I love the carrot ears, I'm just so obsessed. And her little carrot red hair, little ranger. 
given her this polka dotted bow. I've put the little stitching detail around the hat. I've also taken the stitching detail and put it into the tulips as well. You'll notice that a lot of the detail is focused on these three characters here and the background is left to be a background. Sometimes I think, and I'm, I'm such a culprit of this as well, I'll get so excited, I'll start adding in so much of the background that nothing pops or nothing looks um, and this doesn't really look dimensional, but you can tell that this is a background element and that this is a focus, um, even just with the layout of it. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your backgrounds. Uh, you don't need to add the world to a background. Now I'm gonna go through and show you all the other examples <laughs> that I came up with. This is the first one I did and I got super excited by it that I did this one. Now this doesn't have all of the elements that we learn, but it does have the little chick. So if you want to do the little chick by itself, I think it looks really cute. Uh, you could experiment with your little speckled eggs and the speckled, uh, you know, bits all over here. You know, funnily enough, the samples that I've done, all these samples, the background was just me cleaning off my palette. I found that if I just did a quick wash of all the uh, junk that was left on my watercolor palette, it was a nice place to start, kind of dictated the color scheme that I would use as well. So uh, this one became very muted, very soft, and I uh, really, really love this one. This one I did after that because I was so taken with this and I wanted to, uh, you know, reason for the season, right? So I wanted to uh, just do this verse. I wanted to put it in a bunch of eggs and really let the watercolor do its thing. I think that's the nice thing about some of this, uh, some of this coloring style is that uh, if you let the watercolor just do what watercolor does, you that's all you need. You don't really need to add the world to it. So, uh, and especially with this bee paper, it has such a beautiful way of reacting with the watercolor and, uh, and keeping some of these pigments so vibrant. Like, it's just crazy to me how this paper seems so different to the other ones that I've used. Uh, but you can get totally different effects with other papers as well. Let me show you my last example for this. Um, this one, she's a carrot farmer. Love, love, love her. I love her little speckled eggs as well. Um, this is all exactly the same. Just cleaned off my watercolor palette for the background, did a wash over everything, uh, colored in my little elements. We've got the carrot trees here, we've got the bunny ears, we've got the tulips leaves, and all I did was add in my little details with my Pilot OPT. Uh, so really, really happy with this as well. This is in my uh, B paper journal as well. This one, she's giving me very uh, Queen Bay. She's very that, very dramatic sitting on this egg. But I, uh, this has not got a lot of detail in it, not got a lot of pencil work in it. I tried to keep this as much of a focus point as I could. Uh, still thinking I might need to rework some of this a little bit, but I do love the idea of this. If this is the one you want to have a go at, please by all means have a go at that. I have one that I'm still working on here. This is a, a bunch of tulips and uh, she's just standing in there, so. Don't really know what I'm gonna do with this one. Don't know where the direction of this one's going, but I love the color palette and uh, there's some really beautiful iridescence in there as well. And the last one I've got here is in the uh, my little traveler's notebook with the Tomoe River paper. This is, uh, I just wanted to see what it would look like on a different type of paper because I was so taken with all of these examples and these versions. I thought maybe it's just the paper that I'm really into at this point, uh, but I actually really like it on this as well. So she's holding a bunch of carrots, just like this one's holding a bunch of speckled eggs. We've got the same simple dress uh, shapes with lots of details, the same bonnets, uh, bunny ears, big tulip, and uh, I've given her a little cross. This is what I mean about doing the leaves with the brush and, uh, and not actually drawing them. I just think it's a lot more soft and loose. So this is literally everything that I came up with. I hope you have a wonderful Easter season in your journals. Please feel free to have a go at any of these layouts. Uh, you've learned all the techniques, all the doodles, all the things you need to know uh, in how to create these. So I fully trust that you'll be on your way to something great. And um, yeah, just have a great Easter season. Enjoy lots of Easter journaling and I uh, hope you eat lots of chocolate. Please remember the reason for the season as always and until my next video, thanks for learning. Bye!